as we have seen, many in the Jewish community call us deceptive and see us as Christians disguised in Jewish clothes. Many think we're attempting to get Jews to embrace Christianity through any means possible, even to the point of lying about our religious identity and our places of worship. What needs to be made clear is this. Messianic Judaism is not a missionary strategy. We as Jews have a covenantal responsibility to continue living as Jews as we follow Yeshua, the Messiah of Israel. I think once we clearly declare that one of the main messages of Messianic Judaism is that following Yeshua as the Messiah and being proud of your Jewish identity are inseparable, the more we will be understood. The more I've learned about Yeshua, Paul, and the teachings of the New Testament, I've become even more proud and invested in my Jewish identity than I already was. Once we're able to communicate to others that this is genuinely our experience, the more we will be received positively by the wider Jewish community. When we fail to engage in productive conversations with Jews from this wider Jewish community, stereotypes and caricatures can be created on both sides, and we can easily be misunderstood. And, you know, many talk about Jewish-Christian relations, and that is healing between Christians and Jews through interfaith dialogue, and I think that's absolutely important. But what I also think is important, and what we should start talking about, is Jewish-Jewish relations. That is, Messianic Jews, Orthodox Jews, Conservative Jews, Reformed Jews, Secular, all of us need to be dialoguing. Healing and better communication needs to be made within our Jewish community. And I think the second and 11th principles in our guidelines for tough conversations are extremely relevant to how Messianic and non-Messianic Jews should interact. And these are seek to understand before being understood and state what you believe as precisely as possible. The only way to be understood is to be understandable. And I've been attending Messiah Conference for a number of years, and honestly, one of the things I look forward to most is going down to the Jews for Judaism tent at the entrance to the campus of Messiah College. For decades, this counter-missionary organization comes to Messiah Conference, at least at the entrance, with the goal of bringing Messianic Jews out of Messianic Judaism. And the tent has been seen by, by some as these enemies protesting our conference. And historically, there's been a lot of hostile debates down there on both sides. But what I do and what Eric does is we, we go down to the tent and make an effort whenever possible to have conversations, to have productive conversations with these counter missionaries. And I can tell you from ex my own experience that these actually have been productive. They've been enjoyable. We do our best to hear where they're coming from. We ask questions, explain why we're Messianic Jews. And I usually begin my discussions with them by saying, this is why I'm a Messianic Jew, but I would give up my faith if you could show me why I should. You know, I say I value truth more than being right. And I find that this is a great way to start a conversation, letting them know that I'm here for truth. And I actually care about what they have to say. I actually care about what you have to say. And last year, I even asked a counter missionary who has been coming to the tent for literally decades, every year being at the same spot for decades. I asked him, you know, after, after having just hours of conversation with him, I said, you know, why do you come every year? Like, why have you been coming so often? What, what, what motivates you to be here? And the response he gave me was, I care about my people. And that, I think that was, that was really good to hear. And I, I thanked him for that. I thanked him for coming because he comes because he honestly cares about me and Messianic Jews enough to tell, to tell us why he thinks we're wrong and why he thinks we should come back to Judaism, why we should be faithful to Judaism and the God of Israel. And this gives me the opportunity to tell him that I have the same, I, I have the same goal. I want to tell him that I care about remaining faithful to Judaism and to the God of Israel and that I do that through my belief in Yeshua as the Messiah. So we differ there, but we both, I have an opportunity to explain to him that I care about the same things he cares about, to be faithful to the God of Israel and to be faithful to Judaism. And through the conversation, we're, we can be better understood. And I, I've seen that. I think that after having all these conversations with them, with, I mean, Eric and I, you can maybe testify to this too. I, I think um, we've actually been able to be in better communication with those who many times are seen as enemies. 
And to give another example of this Jewish-Jewish dialogue I'm talking about, during this past year's Messianic Jewish academic conference called the Borough Park Symposium, the topic was on the Jewishness of Jesus and Paul. And this was a unique conference in that it it was a Messianic conference that brought together both Messianic and non-Messianic Jewish scholars to discuss these very issues. And one of the presenters was a Jewish New Testament scholar named Dr. Amy Jo Levine, who teaches at Vanderbilt University. And these are the comments she made at the conference that I think shows the benefit of such a Jewish-Jewish dialogue. This is what she said. Rabbi Dr. Kinzer is right when he sees Messianic Jews as part of the Jewish people in the New Testament times. And as far as I can tell from a halakhic position, Messianic Jews have always been Jews. Nothing somehow changed in the year 70 or 135 or 200 or whatever. Well, many people today have a problem with hybridity and would like to place people into neat categories, just be a Jew or be a Christian. That's not the way the world works. The world is a messy and splendid place. Personally, I would rather have Jews who accept Jesus as Lord and Savior to continue to claim their Jewish identity and indeed to be recognized as Jews by other Jews rather than have Messianic Jews simply become Baptists or Roman Catholics or Episcopalians or Presbyterians or whatever. And I would rather have their children know their Jewish identity as a living tradition rather than just a genetic marker. I think that's right, and I think Luke would agree. Well, because that's right. I think we non-Messianic Jews, here I'm speaking for the the rest of the mishpacha, I think we non-Messianic Jews should do more in welcoming our family members who proclaim Jesus as Lord and Savior. Why? Um, Not only is it halakhically appropriate, it's an ethical issue. I have seen far too many instances where Jewish families have become dismembered because one member has become messianic, and I think that's awful. To me, halakhically, the child of a Jewish parent, or at least the mother, is a Jew, and believing in Jesus does not change that essential definition. So we Jews need to do something about this broken family relationship. That I agree. So when it comes to these encouraging comments of acceptance, like Dr. Levine's comments here and others that we've mentioned, I think we should be encouraged. These are confirmations that we have made progress in communicating who we are and behaving in such a way that honors the Lord. This shows that once we are understood, there are not good reasons for why Jewish people should think we're not Jews. And this is especially the case for Jews who want to maintain intellectual consistency. If a Jew can deny the Torah as the word of God, not even try to observe kosher, or even deny the existence of God without controversy over their Jewish identity, why are Messianic Jews treated differently? The thinkers recognizing this double standard are reversing course. And so more examples of this Jewish-Jewish dialogue, recently a Messianic synagogue in Georgia called Tikvat David hosted Jewish scholar Dr. Mark Nanos, who's probably the most influential Paul within Judaism New Testament scholar today. And he gave a seminar on Paul, and it was really a fantastic event. He enjoyed his time there, and this took place within the Messianic Synagogue, which which is really cool. And this year, Dr. Mark Nanos was supposed to be speaking at the UMJC conference until COVID-19 hit. But also, Dr. Amy Jo Levine, she, she spoke at the UMJC conference in 2018. So this is really cool how these New Testament Jewish scholars are coming and speaking at these Messianic conferences, and even in a Messianic synagogue at Tikvat David. And this past November in 2019, Eric and I were at the Society of Biblical Literature Conference, which is a conference that's held annually that has thousands of biblical scholars and students that come to present papers. And during this conference, it, ha- it was held, one of the days was over the weekend, and we had the great opportunity to go to a Messianic Shabbat dinner, and we were joined by not only Messianic Jewish scholars, but also non-Messianic Jewish scholars. And it was really amazing to have an opportunity to worship and fellowship together as a community. And there was just an energy in the room that I wish could be felt by all of us. And really the point that I'm trying to make here is that progress is being made. I also think we should keep in mind that the negative reaction in the Jewish community towards Messianic Jews mostly comes from the older generation. Millennial Jews today are more pluralistic in accepting of Messianic Jews. Recently, we made a post on our Instagram asking how Jewish people respond when they find out that you're Messianic, and one of the respondents was Balin Gad, and she said, all the ones I've told are college age, and they were curious or didn't know what it was, but were open. 
And I think this is really representative of, of how millennial Jews are responding to this. You see, self-identity today is key. And when Messianic Jews identify as Jews, millennials are more open, tolerant, and able to recognize our sincerity rather than assume we're trying to be deceptive. Those in the Jewish community who make an effort to understand us seem to not have this negative attitude evident in the many quotes that Eric and I went over. And this is true from my own experience. So while we shouldn't become dependent on marks of approval from other Jews, nor should acceptance be a primary goal, it is encouraging to hear that some non-Messianic Jewish people have taken the time to meet with us, speak with us, and genuinely consider who we are and how we fit into the wider Jewish community. So let's engage in productive dialogue with other Jews. And when we do, let's apply these two essential principles. Seek to understand before being understood and state what you believe as precisely as possible. When we do this, I think we as Messianic Jews will be better understood and healing will occur within our Jewish community.